Oh my goodness. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Here we go. Once again, I am back for another year of marching band nerd stuff. Good morning again, Daniel Valdez again. I guess the season's starting, so I guess I gotta crawl out of my hole. I guess that's where you all thought I went. Thought the last eight months would have sent me on a on a one-way trip on a rowboat back to Shanghai, but nope, sorry, gotta try harder than that. Back again, all the information, all the stupid crap that I talk about, it's gonna be here. You want Texas marching band stuff, you want marching band theories, ideas, crazy stories, all that stuff, it's all here for you. If you're listening to this for the first time, my name is Daniel Valdez, TexasBands.com moderator. Uh, I guess you can call a blogger during the season when we go to the Bands of America regionals, the state contest, all that stuff. And then I do this show. Disclaimer, anything that I say on here is only of my opinion and does not reflect the opinions of TexasBands.com and its subsidiaries, TexasBands.com, LLC, member FDIC, member SPIC, all that stuff. My thoughts are my own as they say it. So if you're new to this, welcome. Thanks for tuning in. appreciate it. Find this on YouTube. If you're on the TexasFans.com forums, I'll post it every time there. Find it on YouTube. Subscribe on there as well. And if you're tuning in for not the first time, which means you are a repeat offender, I appreciate your support. And the only reason I'm doing this is because people demand it or people want it. I wouldn't say demand. Demand is what keeps Starbucks in business. People want coffee. People demand Starbucks. Anyway, I don't care. I hate Starbucks. Nevertheless, no, Starbucks, sponsor me, please. Love it. Um, so there you go. Let's get started. Let's, 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 let's just jump right into it. There's been so much stuff that's happened in the offseason for marching band, especially Texas marching band. We've had rule changes and, and judging system changes and all sorts of weird stuff that's gone on. And we're going to cover it. I'm going to cover it. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll take care of all that stuff. But here's what we need to do first. First thing we need to do is tell you where this is being recorded from. This is being recorded from the, well, it's almost live, from the new show headquarters in San Antonio, Texas. That's right. Moved back to my hometown about six months ago. Jeez, where does the time go? Used to be Plano Frisco headquarters. None of that anymore. That former life is done. Back home in San Antonio around my friends and family. I can't tell you how much I've missed the Mexican food. I can't tell you. It's good to be back home. So yeah, there's that. You want more details, hit me up. Hit me up on the forums or whatever. So let's talk about some stuff. Big rule changes, Everything's, you know, everybody thinks the sky is falling. No, not a change to the eight-hour rule. How dare you do that? It's a time-honored tradition. And anybody who requires an exception is, is garbage. No, we're not going to... No, calm down, first of all. What is he talking about? Let's talk about it. We're going to talk about the, cha the... I guess you could say it's a major change to the eight-hour rule, even though it doesn't affect everybody. Talking districts of innovation today, and you're probably wondering, what the heck is a district of innovation? Except you probably didn't use the word heck, you probably used a curse word because you're a heathen. That's okay. I forgive you. I probably would do the same thing if I didn't have a lot of parents listening to this. Um, so yeah, change the eight-hour rule. And the reason why we do that is because, or the way we're, the reason we're doing that now is because of something called a district of innovation. What the heck is that? Well, many districts, as long as you're good standing with the Texas Education Agency, you can apply for special exemptions regarding all sorts of stuff. For the purpose of this conversation, and I'll try to make it as brief as possible, we're going to talk about the exemption that lets these districts of innovation, and to give you an example, Conroe ISD is one of them, Louisville ISD is one of them, Leander ISD is one of them. North, Northeast Independent School District here in San Antonio, the school district that houses, that houses uh, Johnson, Reagan, Churchill, they're part of it too, but we need, to, we need to put a disclaimer on that a little bit. And we'll do that in just a second. Districts of innovation. 
you can apply for these exemptions. For the purpose of this argument, we're going to focus in on one special exemption, and that is the right or the ability to change the start date of school. Texas Education Code says that school cannot start in the state of Texas until the fourth week of August. Why? I have absolutely no idea. That's above my pay grade. So ask somebody else about it. Well, these districts of innovation, and that's such a long term, it's like, ugh, it's such a pain to say it every time. These DOIs, let's say that. It sounds like you did something wrong. Got arrested for DOI. Out on $2,500 bond. No. DOIs can change the, the start date of school. Not only can they start a couple of weeks before the fourth week of August, they could start in the middle of the week. I think like Louisville ISD, the, the, the district that houses uh, Flower Mound, Marcus, and Hebron, they can, they're like starting school on a Wednesday. I mean, man, that has to suck. I mean, granted, I didn't like school all that much to begin with, but you're telling me to start on a Wednesday. Oof, <laughs> might need to call in that first day. Nevertheless, these DOIs get to explore that option. And the reason why is because, uh, well, the reason that is stated, and I've read over these documents extensively, the reason why they do that is they're trying to keep the semester days as even as possible. Because people like even numbers. I don't know. So there's that. So how does this fit into marching band? Well, I'm going to tell you. From, so basically, the summer, you can practice as much as you want as far as music goes. And you have different programs do different stuff. Oh, we're going to have drumline camp for this two weeks, and we're going to have this for two weeks, and you know, they do all that stuff. Each program's different. They're like snowflakes. Everyone's different. Everyone's unique. Fine. Well, starting August 1st, which is either tomorrow, if you're listening to when this comes out, or today, if you're listening to it on August 1st, that is when, you, uh, that is when UIL will let you start learning drill moves. It's a shotgun start for everybody, no matter what, they're, no matter what exemption you have. August 1st, you cannot learn any drill moves or choreography, any stuff like that. You can't learn anything like that until August 1st. That's set in stone. And if you violate it, expect to be you know, disqualified from UIL contests. So you got that going on. So from August 1st until when you start school, which for some, which for, for, uh, up until last year, for everybody, it wasn't until the fourth week of August. Everyone was essentially on the same exact playing field, per se. So August 1st, until you start school in the fourth week of August, you get to practice as much as you want. No restrictions whatsoever. You want to do 60 hours a week? 60 hours a week. Fine. You want to do three rehearsals and have them be 20 hours each? You can do whatever you want. No restrictions. And then when you start school on the fourth week of August, bam, eight hour rule. Eight hour rule, no exceptions. You violate that, expect some disqualification and a, and a stern phone call from the UIL. Maybe a strongly worded email or telegram or hologram or whatever they use to communicate with people. Well, now you have these districts, like I said, Conroe, Leander, Louisville, there's all sorts of programs that are starting school earlier than the fourth week of August. So now we've got a decision to make. What do we do? Eight hour rule says once you start school, you're under the eight hour rule. Now keep this in mind. When these districts apply for these special exemptions, I can almost guarantee you that the question of how this is going to affect the marching band's eight-hour rule is very low on the totem pole. It's not a deal breaker of whether a district is going to apply for these exemptions or not. And there's all sorts of steps. They got to drop a plan, and the board of directors has to meet, and they have to do all sorts of stuff. So this is kind of one of those afterthought things. Like, okay, this is what the district decided on. It's been approved. Now how are we going to handle it? Because theoretically, if you start school two weeks earlier than a district that 
that doesn't have these, these exemptions, whether they applied for it and were denied, or whether they just don't see any purpose in having them, now they're, you could say that they're at a bit of a disadvantage. You could say that, okay, well, now they're, now they're unrestricted, and this is going to sound weird, their unrestricted rehearsal time is now restricted. Because instead of having three and a half to four weeks of unrestricted rehearsal time, now these districts of innovation, DOIs, have only two weeks or a week and a half in August of unrestricted time. Some people, I'm not going to say who, some people think, well, some people thought that this whole thing was going to be a bad idea, that DYL should do nothing. You start school, eight hour rule, you start, start school, eight hour rule, and that's it. Hey, you're just starting two weeks early, tough break. They're afraid, or some people were afraid, that if the UIL did nothing, then these directors of programs that are in these DOIs would take that week and a half to two weeks and basically rehearse the band like a drum corps. You're getting 12 hour days every day. Maybe one day off to like go take a shower or something or get a $5 foot long at Subway. Subway sponsor me. <laughs> they were gonna freak out. And it doesn't look like that's happening just yet. And besides, band parents and students are vocal enough that if the rehearsal times were deemed excessive, the directors would have known about it already. This is not something that the directors didn't necessarily plan for. Now keep in mind, about a month ago, we didn't know what the rules were going to be. UIL was still deciding on what to do. And of course, we, there needs to be some sort of fair play rule. There needs to be something fair. And that's, that's, how, that's part of the reason why the UIL judging system is the way it is. It's fairness regardless of, or it's, it's, it's about as fair as you can be, regardless of what type of marching show you're performing, whether it's uh, you know, your typical Bands of America show or military marching show. So what did the UIL do? Well, this is what they did. Let me try to read this off the site. For schools that begin instruction prior to the fourth month in August, the limit of eight hours of rehearsal outside the academic school day per calendar week shall begin on the Tuesday immediately following labor. Oh my God, my head hurts. Oh gosh, who's got to leave? Or an Excedrin, or an Excedrin PM. This is basically what this means. From the first week of August, it, let's go for the exemptions. You, you, have this, you have this DOI exemption. From the first week of August until Labor Day, the Tuesday following Labor Day, which is the day after Labor Day, Monday through Friday, you're limited to eight hours. You start your... Yeah, I'll, 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 back, I'll backtrack a little bit. From August 1st until the day you start school for a DOI, unlimited rehearsal time. Unlimited buffet, unlimited cinnamon rolls, and, you know, pizza, whatever. Unlimited. You practice as much as you want. When you start school, you are under the eight-hour rule from Monday to Friday. Listen to what I said and listen to what I didn't say. Districts of Innovation, those schools, when you start school, before the fourth week of August, Monday through Friday, eight-hour rule. Don't break it. Now, if you want to have a rehearsal, if you want to have a 12-hour rehearsal on a weekend, you go right ahead. We're not stopping you. That's the compromise. So instead of, I guess you could say, I, don't want, I, I hesitate to say you're punishing programs for you know, something that a superintendent who makes six figures a year for a decision they made or a board of directors you know, decision that they made. I hate to say that you're punishing the program, but you got to find some sort of common ground here. Because if you left it completely alone, I think the, the bands that have less rehearsal time would be at a little bit of a disadvantage. A little bit. And I say a little bit. Because we're going to talk about this. In a, we're going we're gonna to get into a little bit of this in just a second. I mentioned Leander, Louisville, Conroe, those, pro, those, those programs that are there. They're basically starting the second, third week of August. 
less unrestricted rehearsal time. Northeast Independent School District, they have applied for District of Innovation exemptions and they were approved. However, the district decided to not implement those changes until 2019. So as of right now, Northeast schools here in San Antonio don't start school until the fourth week of August. So all of August, they have unrestricted rehearsal time. So it's gonna be interesting to see, you know, how much this program rehearsed versus how much this program rehearsed and how they did at the state marching contest. It's, it, that'll, be a, that'll be a little fun experiment. Now I, I have two disclaimers for you. Number one, you're not gonna be able to gather any significant data after just one year of this happening. This is the first year that this has happened. Eight hour rule has been in place for every program with no exemptions, except for like, you know, if there's a natural disaster or something like that. And the Houston area has been hit like that many times in the past. Those exemptions are very rare. And, you know, that's just kind of the way it is. Now, here's the other thing I want to talk about. And I talked to this about, yeah, I talked this to, to people that I talked to that are not from the state of Texas. I always tell them it is not, because you get, we get questions all the time. How are these programs able to play so well, go to Grand Nationals and succeed so much year after year after year when they're only rehearsing eight hours a week? The answer is it is not how many hours you practice. It is the efficiency in which you are conducting your rehearsals. Rehearsal technique is probably the most underrated part of this activity. It is something that nobody talks about. They talk about the product on the field, who arranged your show, who did the drill design, who's your car director, who's this, who's that, who's this, which contest you're going to. You could have the best product in the world, but if you don't know how to rehearse and you don't know how to maximize your show on the practice field, you will have a very difficult time succeeding at contests. And those rehearsals are not going to be fun either. I've seen it with my own eyes. So that's something to keep in mind. Is it, as far as, you know, are there any students listening to this? This stuff is above our pay grade. It doesn't, I don't want to say it doesn't matter, but at the same time, it is how you rehearse that is going to determine how successful you are. You can, I can give you 60 hours a week. I can give you 60 hours a week in the middle of the school week to do what you need to do, to rehearse and do whatever you need to do. But if you're not getting better each day, if there's not a plan of action to get the marching show to where it needs to be, the, the season's going to be really difficult. So it'll be interesting to see, and I know I can already hear I can already hear the arguments at the end of the season. Well, this program had more rehearsal time, therefore that's why they did better, and it's not fair. I don't even want to hear it. You know what the rules are. Programs know what the rules are now. What are you going to do? It happens every year. And I could see it happening this year. This program had more, pro more rehearsal time and that's not fair. At the end of the day, none of that matters. You can only control what you can control. Maximizing your rehearsal time. Programs have been doing it for years and years and years. There's a little bit of a wrinkle in it, but the only thing you can control is what you can control. You can't control anybody else's rehearsal. So there it is, districts of innovation. The eight hour rule now has an exemption. So it'll be interesting to see. And it's gonna take a couple of years to gather good data and you know see how it's affecting programs. You're not gonna be able to tell whether this is going to be a success and a failure long-term after just one year. You're not gonna be able to do that. People wanna be able to do that, especially, especially programs that maybe don't do as well this year. And I hate to see that. Control what you can control, rehearse what you need to rehearse, maximize your rehearsal time. Get your program right, 
and then the rest is the rest is however it's going to be. Simple as that. I think I'm done here for right now. Sure. Okay. Well, let's uh, uh, real quick. And I, uh, thanks for listening. I appreciate it. Let's talk real quick about how the season's going to go. The people in the past, you know, you've. You kind of know how it goes when it comes around to a big contest, the Bands of America Regionals. By the way, there's another Bands of America Regional in Waco. We're going to talk about all that stuff. We've got plenty of time to do it. We'll talk about all that stuff, but it's basically up to you. What do you want to talk about? If there's something pressing, if there's something that you, know, you all want to hear opinions on or, or theories on and stuff like that, please let me know. You want to talk about the drum corps season this year and how wacky it's been? Be happy to talk about that. You want to hear old stories? You want, uh, of, you know, state 2002 contest, the downpour there. You want to hear all sorts of weird stuff? I got plenty of those. We can talk about that. But as far as when we get really get into contest season, we're going to keep that same formula. Before a major contest, we do something called the nerd in. We go over all the information, we look at programs, we look at schedule blocks, we look at parking, we look at concessions, we look at all that stuff. And then the day after or the Monday after the contest, we review everything. We call that the cherry on, cherry on whatever. Even though cherries suck, that is a very, that is something I will not waver on. That's something we call with Cherry on the Austin Regional, Cherry on Waco, Cherry on the Nationals, all that fun stuff. Give the TexasVans.com Facebook page a like or follow. I don't know what it is. Personally, I am not on Facebook anymore, and I know people freaked out, not necessarily freaked out. They're like, are you okay? And I appreciate the concern. I really do. It's just really interesting that, you know, you remove yourself from one social media platform and Everyone thinks something's really wrong. No, everything's cool. Not on Facebook anymore. TexasBands.com stuff is. I'm sure you'll find a link for this uh, show on there. You want to give me a follow? You want to give me a follow on Instagram? A little bit more of a personal account, but I'm not a criminal or anything, so everything's good there. Uh, follow me on Instagram, DanPodValdrez, D-A-N-P-O-D-V-A-L-D-R-E-S. Give me a follow there. Shoot me a message there. You want to talk about some stuff? Be more than happy to. Always on the forums. We're back, my friends. If you're not excited, if you're a student, you're not excited, if you're a band parent, you're not excited, it's too late now because the season started already. So get up, get after it, learn your music, do what you need to do. Let's get hyped. Let's get ready. It's back. Marching season in Texas, 2018 version. So glad to talk to you all today. Thank you so much for the support. Reach out to me if you need anything. Always come find us. We're glad to be here. I'm glad to be here. We're back, baby. We'll see you soon. Coming back in a few days. Take care. Adios. Bye-bye.